What I want to do next is I want to break down a myofibril um, and get to a sarcomere structure and then see how that causes both striations when you stain the tissue and then um, how it's related to contraction as well. So um, I want to show you this myofibril. So this is the big cable-like bundle, okay? And then I want to look at an individual sarcomere within the cable-like bundle. A sarcomere is from one Z-line to the next Z-line. And remember, this is like a coaxial cable. It's a cable made of cables or a wire made of wires. Um, but I want to look at it 2D because the 3D picture is a little hard to imagine. So what I want to do is just build this for ourselves. Um, and it's here if you want to label it, but you can also draw it for yourself. So the important proteins that we're going to be talking about, you will learn more in phys than you did in anatomy, but you'll start at the same place. And then the pattern um, that occurs because of those proteins. So let us, let's see. Let's build it on a whiteboard. All right, so first thing is that Jagged line to jagged line. These are, of course, called Z lines. Um, and in your anatomy book, they usually call them Z discs. It's the same thing. Um, and then drawn in this sort of blue color in your textbook is a skinny protein that's extending from the edges of the Z lines toward the middle but not touching when it's relaxed, okay? This is the actin thin filament, okay? And then drawn in orange in your book is the one that is in the middle. This is the thicker of the two of them. And this is myosin, and it's the thick filament. Okay, and then a couple of structures on actin and on myosin. Okay, so myosin has these little projections sticking up off of it. These are called myosin heads. and they're on each one of them. In your textbook, they're labeled as cross bridges, but they're not really cross bridges until they attach to the actin, okay? And then um, this is not what these look like, but it's a good metaphor, so just go with it with me. Um, the actin has binding sites for the myosin heads on it, and so I'm gonna draw them as like little handles. They don't look like handles, they're just chemical binding sites. But it's a decent metaphor to work with and I don't know how to draw a chemical binding site. Okay, so these are the important parts and we'll add a little bit more to it in a minute. But so these are called actin active sites. Some textbooks call them myosin binding sites. I don't usually call them that because I want them to have the word actin in them because they're part of actin and not myosin. It's fine if you want to call them myosin binding sites, but realize that's not how I'm going to refer to them. And so before we go any further, I want to show you the basis of the striping of skeletal muscle fibers. Because wherever you have thick proteins or lots of proteins, it's going to stain darker when you use a protein staining technique. And wherever you have fewer proteins or less dense proteins, it's going to stain lighter. So I'm gonna draw the banding pattern in. And so notice that I'm going from one edge of the myosin to the other edge of the myosin. Myosin is thicker, so wherever the myosin is, it's actually going to be pretty dark. We call that the A band. It stands for anisotropic, but it's also the second letter of dark, if you want to remember that. In the middle of the A band will be an area where it's pretty dark, but not quite as dark, because actin and myosin 
are not overlapping. That's called the H zone. Okay, and then from the edge of one A band to the edge of the next A band, it's going to be the lightest, and that's called the I band. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like when somebody can draw and look at the banding pattern. Come on. The banding pattern that you get. And that is here. So um, you have the A band from one end of the myosin to the next end of the myosin. And you've got it here. You've got the H zone, which is slightly lighter in the middle. Okay, the M line, by the way, stabilizes the myosin, and it's in the very middle of each sarcomere. And then from the edge of one A band to the next A band is the I band, which is um, uh, the isotropic or the lighter band. Okay, so let's look at what this would do when it actually contracted so that you can see how this has to do with contractions. This is just a short little video showing you the banding pattern related to contractions. In a relaxed muscle, actin and myosin myofilaments lie side by side, and the H zones and I band are at maximum width. During contraction, the actin and myosin myofilaments interact. The actins slide toward the center of each myosin myofilament. As a result, the sarcomeres shorten. In the fully contracted muscle, the ends of the actin myofilaments overlap, the H zones disappear, and the I band becomes very narrow. Okay, let's watch that one more time, this time without sound. Okay, so what they're going to do is start out relaxed. In a relaxed muscle, actin and myosin my going to start out relaxed, and you're going to see the banding pattern, A band, H zone, I band, right? And then the basis of skeletal muscle contraction will be that the um, actin and the myosin will slide past one another, and this is introducing you to that. So watch what happens when the myosin heads reach up and grab the actin active sites and pull. Watch what happens to the distance between the Z lines. <sighs> Mouse is driving me crazy. So everything is getting pulled into the A band. And so the tissue will look much, much darker when it's contracted. And that's the same thing that this is showing you. This is a relaxed skeletal muscle fiber and it's actually striped, light, dark, light, dark. And then when the thing is fully contracted, it's much, much darker. The whole thing is relatively dark. Okay, so you've got the sarcomere structure, the A band, the I, I band, the H zone. I didn't teach you about these little proteins, but these little springy proteins at the edge are called titan. And what those do is when you actually let go, the myosin heads and the actin active sites let go of one another, the titan springy proteins will put it back to its original length. So um, relationship again between a sarcomere and a myofibril is that if the sarcomere is a boxcar, the myofibril is the train, okay? Chain of sarcomeres makes up a myofibril. And then you have a sarcomere here that you can label as well. You can label the M line, the actin thin myofilaments, the myosin thick myofilaments, the Z line, the H zone, A band, I band, and then the whole sarcomere. Okay, so that's going to lead us into what we call the sliding filament theory, which is basically taking those basic proteins and watching how they cause contraction. And we'll do that in the next one.